in this video I am talking about this little thing Sigma 24mm f3.5 DGD and contemporary lens If you are here for the first time, my name is Path, and on this channel I talk about all things photography and video, gear reviews, tutorials and more. If this is something that you are interested in, then please consider subscribing. This is a third, well actually fourth out of new eye series of Sigma contemporary lenses. 45mm was the first one which came out without any noise about it, but then Sigma have announced and launched 65mm, 35mm and this 24, all in L mount and Sony E as well. This is the first time I had a chance to play with this 24mm, put it through its paces and give you my honest opinion about this little thing. Before I go into it though, I must say massive thanks to Sigma UK for lending me this lens for this review. However, I wasn't paid or asked by Sigma or anyone else to say anything specific about it, so it is my 100% unbiased opinion about this lens. I do use 24 105mm lens a lot and for me 24mm is really unexciting end of that lens. So when I got this, knowing that it is only 24mm lens and it is only f3.5, I must say I didn't have much expectations. In fact, it was a lens that I was least looking forward to reviewing and shooting with. But it turns out that I was completely wrong about everything I thought this lens is. In fact, from the first photo I have taken with it, it turned out to be the most exciting and cool lens that I have shot with in a while. It is not only tiny and looking actually cute, it actually delivers really outstanding results and it is really fun to shoot with. 24mm is actually quite wide focal length, for sure wider than it seems. It's not an ultra wide, but certainly more than wide enough for shooting landscape, astro, urban, street events or even interiors. It's not a focal length I'd normally would use for any portrait shoot, but this combined with the superb sharpness and contrast really pushed me harder to think outside of the box, shoot some portraits and get those results. While this aperture is only f3.5, but to be honest, when shooting this wide, you wouldn't see much more separation if the aperture was any wider. Sigma went for f3.5 to keep the quality of images higher, but also the lens's overall size smaller. But I'll talk about the, the size and the build in just a moment. What really is surprising is the fact that you can literally go super close to your subject with it. The end of the lens can literally be almost touching whatever you are photographing and it will still focus. This with the wide angle of view and because being so close creates lens compression and way more depth of field that you'd expect from f3.5. It makes this lens quite unique and a lens that is not just one trick pony. I love going really really close with, with it to get that different and little bit wacky perspective and a different point of view than, than normal. The images this lens delivers are typical Sigma top class quality. There's no compromise in quality at all, but you have to bear in mind that uh, like other lenses in eye series, there is no optical correction if you are shooting raw images. There's visible bulging, vignetting and tiny bit of chromatic aberration, but these all can be very easily fixed in post. 24 millimeter is definitely wide enough for handheld vlogging like this, or vlogging in general. I don't personally like wider, wider lenses than 24 for this kind of uh, vlogging <laughs> just because you get this too much of this crazy uh, distortion or just too wide really so with 24 you can actually see what's behind me quite, quite clearly and it's actually wide enough to hold the camera in my hands and talk, talk to it like this also there's no stabilization built into this lens but 24 as most of wide angle lenses really are quite forgiving to small camera shake handshake the size and weight of this lens also makes it a perfect choice for any gimbal work. I'd normally use 24 to 105mm lens set to 24mm on my gimbal, but that lens is three times bigger and three times heavier than this. The autofocusing in the video is good, smooth and the lens doesn't focus hunt at all. It all works really well here as expected from, from Sigma lens, no surprises there.
no hiding the fact that this lens is tiny very tiny. The whole thing is only 8 centimeters long with a supplied hood attached or 6.4 centimeter without. Federlite weighing just 255 gram. 7 aperture blades with round diaphragm, 55 millimeter filter thread, 10.8 centimeter minimum focusing distance and macro like results with magnification of 1 to 2. Construction is pretty much identical to all other i-series lenses. All metal, solid build, even the hood is made of metal. Only, only one switch, on and off, auto manual focus switch. Aperture ring that can be controlled manually by hand on the lens or automatically by the camera. I wish there was aperture lock button as it's sometimes very easy to turn it by accident. The aperture is not declicked and it has got nice firm steps when, when being changed. Focus by wire with smooth and firm focus ring. There is a magnetic lens cap as well as the standard traditional one included. For magnetic lens cap, there is a new magnetic lens cap holder that you can be attached to your, to your bag that can be purchased separately uh, for this to be attached to, to magnetic holder when you are using the lens so you don't lose it. There is no optical stabilization, but there is dust and splash proof sealing. This lens retails for £479 here in UK or $549 in US. It has got some stiff competition from Samyang, Rockinen and Tamron. But if you are looking for a rock solid build and image quality, then this is a no brainer. I really love pretty much everything about this lens. And to me, it is a great value for money and a very good choice if you want a lens that is not only fun to use, but also very practical. Its size, weight and the focal length make it a great choice for travel and everyday walkabout lens and a lens that can give you outstanding results whatever you decide to shoot with it. I'd definitely be buying it as it really adds another dimension to what I really thought about 24mm focal range before I used this. I do like to travel light and I do travel very often with a gimbal so this really ticks all the boxes for me in that regard. The fact that you can shoot pretty much anything from super super close up to a portrait to wide angle landscape with just one tiny this tiny and light lens makes it a winner for me. And this is it from me. If you found this video in any way helpful, then please give me the thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content like this from me, please consider subscribing, hit that bell button to get notifications of my future videos. And thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. I do like it. Ah, I don't like it. Or maybe I do. <laughs> it is not tiny. It is not only tiny. When one, two, one, two, test, 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 testicles traditional one included. There's for these for the magnetic and we done wrap. <laughs>